Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to our slash entitled people, where people truly believe that they can do whatever the heck they want, whenever they want, because they're so darn special. And in this episode, guys, it's all about crazy entitled mothers. And one woman cuts off Opie's hair because she doesn't like it because it's too ugly. Strap yourselves in, grab yourselves a drink as it's another wild episode. Guys, subscribe if you haven't, and as always, you can send or link your Reddit posts or stories to this email right here. Okay, so this one happened a number of years ago. I was working the cash one night at a large grocery chain in Canada. It was a pretty slow night, only a few customers an hour type of evening. I was standing at my register talking to one of my coworkers when a lady, a Karen, and her kid pull up to my lane, and she starts unloading her shopping cart that had about a dozen large packages of T-bone steaks. Now, I didn't think too much of it at first because sometimes people do come in with big orders for barbecues. So I finished scanning her order and give her the total, which was a few hundred dollars, as each pack was about 20 to 25 dollars. And she immediately goes full Karen, and she yells at me, Are you an idiot? You scanned these wrong, these are a dollar each. I then asked her if she meant the steaks, and she yells again and says, Yes, of course, the steaks. I then explained to her that the steaks are priced by weight, and they couldn't be one dollar each. She continues to freak out, demanding another cashier come do my job as I'm incapable. And she yells something about how I'm an idiot, how I will never amount to anything, and how I will always be a minimum wage worker. Meanwhile, her kid's standing there the whole time looking horrified, but also like he's seen this before. She then yells at me saying, if you're calling me a loyal customer a liar, Come and see, and I'll show you their one dollar each. As I said, since it's a slow night, I just say sure, and follow her to the cooler section. Once there, she points to a sign near the steak cooler, and she yells, Look, it says right there, one dollar each. Or are you too stupid and can't read? It's at this point, I look at the sign, look back to the woman, back at the sign and say, Well ma'am, it does say one dollar each, for the bottles of ketchup in the display, that the sign is clearly hanging off of. The woman looks at the sign again, and realizes her mistake, but she has to yell at me one more time, saying, Well why would you idiots put it so close to the damn stakes? And with that, she storms off, and her kid looked so embarrassed. To this day, it's one of the most satisfying things that's happened to me on the job. Oh man guys, I would have paid money to be right there at that very moment when she realized the one dollar was for the ketchup and not the steaks. Like, way to go Karen, berating a poor employee for being an idiot and not knowing how to read when clearly you can't. And let me just say guys, if the trays of steak were a dollar each, you can bet your sweet behind that they wouldn't last longer than 30 seconds. And honestly, I'm surprised she didn't try to demand the steaks at that point. And while we're on the topic of mothers embarrassing their kiddos, listen to this one, guys. Now, I'm honestly just not the best storyteller. Unfortunately, the entitled person in this story is my mother, and I'm disgusted with her behavior, so I thought to post it here. So my mother is well known to be a Karen even joking about it herself sometimes. Now, she's usually really sweet, but when it comes to staff or workers, her Karen side comes out full force. I have many stories about her antics. So, she's labeled here as a Karen since she wears the name proudly. Me and my partner are moving out of our house to a new town. So last week, I moved back home with my parents for a few days to clean out my old storage room. My dad had a seizure the first day I moved home, so my mom, the Karen, asked me to help her with some shopping while my grandma watched my four siblings and took care of my dad. I drove us around town and to a few stores, eventually ending up at a Kmart. She wanted to get some workout gear, so we go in, do our shopping, and then head to the checkout. And here's where things get going. My mom grabs the receipts and I grab the items, getting ready to walk out of the store. Now there's been a lot of thefts recently due to the economic climate of my country at the moment, so security will glance at your receipts, see the number of items you have, and let you out. Usually, they don't do this to everyone, just shady people. Which has gotten the company in hot water because of racism and discrimination, so the company now makes an effort to check all receipts, which I'm fine with. 
So as we're walking out, my mother makes it past the security scanners before the young lady working as a security guard asked to see her receipt, and that was the big mistake. Hearing her ask that, my mother immediately screws her face up and she makes more than a few scoffing sounds before exclaiming loudly, Excuse me? Do I look like someone who would shoplift? She said that loudly, and at this point, everyone at the tills is looking over, and I feel like melting into a puddle to get away, as I have social anxiety. The poor lady puts her hands up in an oh no, Karen on the loose gesture, and she politely explains that we need to check everyone's receipts, we're not discriminating. That's when Mother Karen pops up and screws her face up more and says, Look at me. Do I look like a shoplifter? All my clothes are labeled, all expensive brands. She then scoffs again, winding up for a whole tirade. Meanwhile, she's waving the little paper that would save me from embarrassment at this point. She's slowly turning a lovely shade of tomato red, and she looks like she's going to burst. Realizing things aren't gonna get much, much worse, I finally pick myself up out of my mental puddle, grab the receipt from her claws, and show the security guard, who's still attempting to placate the raging beast. I then hand it over, politely saying, Here, have a look at this, okay? while gazing longingly at the sliding doors, as I know salvation from the dirty looks hitting the back of my head is only a few steps away. The poor security guard waves me through, and I grab my mother's shoulder to push her out, and she relents, moving through and muttering stuff about rights, managers, and not doing her job, stomping her feet like a toddler. I look over my shoulder as we walk out and give the security lady, who looked like she had just been slapped, a little smile and mouth an apology. The last words I hear before the doors to salvation slid shut was the security guard commenting in a small voice, I only needed to see the receipts, it's my job. And I felt horrified. Relief flooded me as I realized that it was over, embarrassment burning at my cheeks as I shepherded the Karen to the car. All the while, she's going on about how outrageous this was, how she feels disgusted, feels like a vagrant, all because she was asked to show her receipt. Thinking this was over, I hopped in the front seat, handshaking and my eyes tearing up. But no, Karen turns to me, scrunches up her face, and makes one more remark. She says to me, this only happened because you look homeless. You need to wear a dress next time. Thanks, mom. So yeah, I just want to say this right now, guys. Anyone can shoplift. <laughs> and honestly, a lot of people do it for the thrill, Karen. So basing it on the amount of expensive clothes that someone wears is just stupid. And I also want to say that a lot of people who wear and flaunt designer clothing are just looking for attention and are deeply, deeply in debt. Like anybody can put a $500 designer t-shirt on a credit card to look rich, Karen while being dead broke, so some in reality might need to steal. And I also want to say that I'm sorry OP, like if that were my mom, I would be saying I don't know this woman at all, and would have just kept walking out the doors. Okay, so when I was younger, I dealt with a lot of crappy situations. My only real escape from that was my hair. And I know how silly that sounds, but it is what it is. When life started to fall apart, I would turn to my hair and use that as a medium to control and reflect how I felt. I would cut it, dye it, style it weird, whatever. It would just make me feel better. In 2011, I gave myself an 80s-like purple mohawk. That involved shaving off a good portion of my hair. And that was the last time I truly felt that I wasn't in control of my life. Since then, I've let my hair grow without much messing with it other than regular maintenance. So the year after the birth of my third child, my hair reached the length of my thighs. To me, my long, beautiful hair is a reflection of how far I've come with my overall mental health and happiness. It's very, very, very important to me. And this brings me to now. With three children under five, my long hair stays in either a pony, braid, or bun. Little hands tend to pull on it otherwise. Now this fact for some reason has been extremely annoying to my husband's stepmother. Every time I would see her, at least once, she would bring up what a waste my hair was on me, and she would tell me that a mother should not have a rat nest on her head. She's annoying, and I do ignore her for the most part because she just wants attention and always has to get her way. And I won't give in to her, until yesterday. So I was sitting at their house on the couch, breastfeeding my youngest and having a pleasant conversation with my husband and father-in-law. 
when all of a sudden I feel a tug on my hair. And before I could completely pull away, I heard the scissors close. And there's my mother-in-law and my four-year-old just standing behind the couch, both laughing, as she holds a huge portion of what was my bun. The three of us turned and stared at her, and it was like looking at a cartoon villain. I'm effing devastated, trying not to cry in front of my kids. My husband starts asking her if she's insane, and my four-year-old starts to cry, which is then followed by my mother-in-law, who tearfully claims, relax, it's just a joke, it'll grow back, we thought everyone would laugh. The whole situation falls apart, with my husband arguing on my behalf, my three kids and I crying, mother-in-law snot bubble sobbing, and father-in-law trying to get us to calm down. We end up leaving almost right away, with my husband telling his dad to divorce his mom because being married to an overgrown 8-year-old is probably illegal, which I would have giggled at if I wasn't so upset. My husband then drives us around looking for a stylist that'll take a walk-in, and I call my sister-in-law to come sit with me. Looking at my tattered hair was horrible. Large chunks were gone, the length was all over the place, it was awful, I felt like I lost a body part. Luckily the stylist was very talented, and she salvaged my hair to right above my shoulders. It does look nice, but I'm still sad looking at it. I don't know how long it'll take to get over this, and mother-in-law did send me a couple of half-assed apology texts. One of her texts said, sorry, but don't be a baby, hair does grow back you know. So yeah, the post ends right there guys, but oh my goodness, like I couldn't imagine the pain that OP felt at that very moment. And to have her mother-in-law jokingly say, oh, it's just hair, it'll grow back, it's a joke, is like rubbing salt on the wound. Like yeah, Karen, it does grow back, but does that woman have any idea how long it takes to grow hair down to your knees? It literally takes years and years, and for her to just come along and take a pair of scissors to it while in front of the family is absolutely insane. OP does come back with an update though guys that says, So after a lot of talking with my husband and my sister-in-law, I've decided to press charges with their support. Sister-in-law is looking into hair extensions for me, but I'm not sure what I want to do yet. So today, my mother-in-law was over, and as always, she started to talk about children. We've been married for 8 years now, but we don't have children because we don't want them and mother-in-law has a hard time to wrap her head around it. She started to wail that we're both gonna be too old soon, we're both 30, and I kind of feel that she thinks our dog has the fault in it. I think she sees our dog as some kind of a hindrance that prevents us from having children, because sometimes she'll say something like, if you didn't have that damn dog, you could have children more safely. Or, it's so weird that you care so much about an animal, but you don't even think about having your own child, that's stupid. Our German Shepherd is 14 years old now. And of course, my husband and me, we realize that his life is coming to an end, and it's really hard because he's been my dog since I was a teenager, and my husband has come to love him even more. He's like a child to us, and it's very difficult to say goodbye. He doesn't have any terminal illness though, and the vet says as long as he's still eating, drinking, and walking, we don't have to think about putting him down yet. So this time, mother-in-law gets upset because we asked her to close the topic once and for all. Whether or not we have kids is none of her business, and we're definitely not going to have them just because she wants us to. Hearing us say that, she went out of the living room to get her jacket that was hanging on the rack. Between the living room and the front door, there's a short hallway, and our dog was walking there. I went to see her out, just in time to see mother-in-law snarling and screaming at our dog, Get out of the way, you dirty mutt, as she kicked him. The dog staggered aside, surprised, as he's never been hit before. Even when he was a puppy and doing all kinds of mischief, we never ever physically punished him, and this woman wasn't gonna either. So I was like, what the F are you doing? Why the hell would you kick my dog? And mother-in-law responds, well, why is he getting in my way? He's moving like a snail. I don't have time to stand here forever. And that's when I yell back, so move your ass around him. And honestly, she could have easily walked past him because the hallway is wide enough. But no, she probably hoped that no one would see her taking out her frustration about us not having children out on the dog. I told her the dog lives in this house and she doesn't, and she doesn't have any right to treat our pet like that. 
The dog doesn't even have a fault in anything. If we wanted to have kids, we would have them regardless of owning a dog. He's not an obstacle. I then told her if she ever does something like that again, I will rip her head off. My husband didn't see his mom kicking the dog, but he did hear the noise and he came to see what's going on. I told him that his insane mother attacked our dog. And first, he couldn't believe it, and then he blazed in fury. He was 100% on my side and told her to leave the house and to never come back. He said she'll never be welcome back to our house because our dog deserves a peaceful remaining time of his life, and she's a danger to him. And to be honest, I was pleasantly surprised. I know he puts me above his mother, but I never thought he had that much of a spine. Mother-in-law was starting to say something, but my husband dragged her outside. He didn't even let her get dressed. He threw her jackets and boots out the door and told her to never contact us again. And if we decide to have kids, she'll never see them. Hearing my husband say that, mother-in-law was offended beyond words. And she said, all because of one dirty, shedding, unsanitary piece of hair, you'll both regret it. Our dog is fine, in case you're wondering. My husband insisted that we go to the vet to make sure that mother-in-law didn't cause some internal damage. But everything's okay, as much as it can be in his age. My husband has blocked mother-in-law's phone, and it looks like he's very serious about going no contact with her. And so am I. I'll never understand the cruelty towards animals. Yeah, so mother-in-law sounds like such a disrespectful person all around. Like, she doesn't respect her son's choice to be child-free, doesn't respect their beloved pets, and had no problem booting the dog for not getting what she wanted. And seriously, I just want to say mad props to the husband for standing up for OP and the dog in that situation. Like, give the husband and Mr. German Shepherd a stake because they both deserve it. I've been married to my husband for a long time. Mother-in-law was mostly low to no contact for probably the last 10 years of my life, and it's been divine because of that. But way back, I tried so, so hard to get on her good side. I was such a sweet summer child. I thought to myself, she should be happy for her son, because I cooked and cleaned and threw parties, and most people liked me. But she was sly, manipulative, and always had to have it her way. My husband didn't catch the nuances of her behavior. I tried to point it out with little luck because I had no experience with a woman like this. We left for our honeymoon a week after our wedding, enough time for us to set up our small apartments and get cozy living together beforehand. We left for a week, with the keys left to mother-in-law to fetch our mail and various things. And when we got back, she had completely rearranged my kitchen, the living room, threw out pictures that were on the wall, and knickknacks from our bedroom. And I swear, she also tossed some of my lingerie that she might have thought was too inappropriate. I was upset, so upset that I cried to my husband, and he was angry at his mom. He then talked to her, and he came home telling me that she can't imagine why I would be so upset, that she was being so helpful and that she didn't mean to do anything wrong. My husband also told me that tears came at her bidding, so my husband was thrown for a loop, never having experienced a woman-to-woman territorial stops. So he came home tail-talked and simply told me that he would help me put things back. Whenever mother-in-law was up to her shenanigans, she would wait until we were alone, look at me, and do this evil smile with a nod. And I learned from the best, the very best. Mother-in-law was the town pillar. She was active in the church and charity, and so sweet to the people she approved of. So here's the meat of the post. Mother-in-law is old now, but she's just as sneaky. If anything, old age has sharpened her skills, and she's taken on the role of entitled helpless old lady quite fabulously. She did a week-long stint in the hospital recently, and my husband got the key to her house to retrieve her mail, etc., etc., Well, I made a copy of said key, without my husband knowing, of course, because I had a plan. During that week, I took some time off work to let myself into her house to rearrange, I mean, clean her kitchen. I also threw away some broken porcelain, some other items that weren't necessary, took the pictures off the wall and put them inside the closet, and then I rearranged the linen closet, the coat closet, mother-in-law's closet, and her bathrooms, both of them. I left the living room mostly alone, sadly, because I didn't want my husband to catch on. Then, on the day he was supposed to pick her up from the hospital and bring her home, I offered to help him clean her house for her homecoming. Hearing me say that, he was surprised at my offer, but I said I've decided to let bygones be bygones. So we cleaned, mopped, and vacuumed, and we got everything sparkly and clean. 
I then went with my husband to fetch his mom, and I sat in the back seat. When we arrived, mother-in-law immediately noticed things were askew, but she couldn't tell what it was yet. And then she noticed the missing pictures, and she says, Hey, what did you do with my pictures? My husband and I said, What do you mean? And she says, You stole my pictures. I responded, Oh my, no, I just helped your son clean. That's all I did. My husband confirmed that that's all we did. I asked if she'd like some tea, and she yells at me to stay out of her kitchen. She then went in herself, and she screamed, What have we done? And I looked at my husband all puzzled, and my husband repeats that he and I only clean the counters and the dishes, and we mopped, and that's all. At this point, mother-in-law was livid, so I told my husband that my presence might be upsetting her, so maybe I should leave. My husband was confused, because he had no idea why his mom was acting so hostile towards me. So he agreed. So I cheerfully told mother-in-law that I would be on my way, and that husband can call me when he's ready to be picked up. And that's all he heard. He didn't see me smiling at mother-in-law because he was facing my back. And you all, I nodded at her with her very own signature nod, and she was livid. I beat this entitled woman at her own game. When I went to pick him up a few hours later, he told me that on the way home that she had accused me of all sorts of things, especially throwing away her things, and that's when I said, oh, the poor dear's mind must be going. And he agrees, the poor thing is getting so old after all. She should have been nicer to me as I get to help pick her nursing home. And I know very well how to play the helpful supportive role. Thanks, mother-in-law. Oh my goodness, talk about getting some great petty revenge on mother-in-law. And the best part about this, guys, is her husband will never, ever, ever know. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. I hope you didn't shake your heads too hard. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, it's an r slash malicious compliance. Where OP's wife tries to take everything from him and divorce, and she gets absolutely destroyed. Guys, go check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.